good day my dear undergraduate and emerging postgraduate students the topic for the day is a little long but i shall be as deliberate and fast as possible whether it is neat or next is not our business and the subjects covered are across all years hope you are able to identify it or understand it let us see if we can find a solution to it towards the end any idea what all these letters mean so this is my very favorite symbol rats we are all racing against time for students not only in pathology but in entire mbbs also the case history for the day a 42 year old male who was an incessant alcoholic and was warned to refrain from it by the doctor which as usual he ignored he developed distaste for fatty foods and later a loss of appetite he presented with hematemesis and altered sensorium his laboratory values are as to be shown and he was put on diuretics the blood values were very closely monitored with this itself are you able to make a diagnosis there are some key words always which you people must catch in any history or problem whatsoever and i would like you people to kindly justify the manifestations how do these develop and what are the roots of it enumerate the other clinical features and the reasons for that develop that is the purpose of today's class so these are the values serum ammonia urea total bilirubin alanine amino transferase alkaline phosphatase gamma glutamyl transferase and albumin all of this point to one particular organ and obviously the values are given here it is up to you people to be perfect with the values because that can take you to the diagnosis look at this the normal values are given over here and i find that almost everything is increased the blood urea is of course a little normal but the serum ammonia is quite high so as usual think of the subheadings the subheadings will take you to the answer so definition causes criteria for diagnosis sign symptoms sites of anastomosis a strange heading a transudate and exudate organ changes complications what am i trying to arrive at so this is obviously a liver pathology and the organ is shown over here i am not going into the normal anatomy of it so the dusky brown color of it and then there is a central vein the radiating parts of the hepatocytes there are the three zones of it one is periportal then the central then the perivenular again a schematic one of it i find central vein at the alternate angles i'll be able to find the portal triad these are the radiating parts of the hepatocytes which are shown over here and in this there is a sinusoid which has got a fenestrated lining fenestrated means window like this the green color is the biliary canalicula have it in one corner it will be useful sometime so this again is a higher magnification and then there is an intervening space of the space of disc now there are two diseases which we can or two manifestations which we can think of one obviously is cirrhosis so there is a decrease in the function 
and these are the headings I am trying to arrive. Let me always make use of a picture. I find that the liver, even on appearance, it is firm. It is shrunken and the entire surface of the liver is being covered by nodules. It is not smooth as I had shown you in the original picture. Nor does it have a yellow color that we usually see in a case of fatty liver. Look at this one. In this case, the liver is enlarged, four to six kg. There are various causes for the fatty liver. Kindly go back and read up about it because my class is not fatty liver today. So these are the various reversible changes. Initially, you have a normal liver. It can go in for steatosis or a fatty change, which is reversible. Later on, there can be an inflammation. Even at this stage, there is a chance of reversal. But when the inflammation becomes persistent and chronic, it goes in for cirrhosis, which is nothing but fibrosis. That is what you people are seeing over here. A beautiful normal liver and then a cirrhotic liver, which has got nodules throughout. And even in the cut surface, I am able to appreciate. Look at this. The word kiros means tawny. And there is an effacement of architecture, fibrosis. It becomes firm. And the parent camel nodules are created by regeneration. This incidentally can be another one. If the patient were to have had a right heart failure. Then you find that there is a back pressure, there can be a congestion with the central vein. Therefore, there is stasis in one region, fatty change in another region, producing alternate dark and light areas, which is the characteristic nutmeg appearance of a CVC of the liver. Courtesy School of Medicine, University of California. And look at this one. So this is a triad because I am finding multiple structures over here and there is a central vein. In some areas I am able to see the necrosis whereas in other areas it is a peric pain. Some cells are round because of the fatty change. So there are alternate dark areas and pale areas which produces a characteristic nutmeg appearance which is again seen over here. There are very many causes for it. You can go to either Davidson or Robbins or any of the groups. There is a stupid mnemonic hepatic, which I have picked up from at medical topic. H for hemochromatosis, primary of hepatitis, enzyme deficiency, particularly alpha-1 antitrypsin, post-hepatic, A for alcohol, tyrannosis, Indian childhood cirrhosis, C for copper or cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, Cholestatic can be biliary. So it is again a beautiful mnemonic just for a case of recapitulation. Tomorrow, if you are asked what is not a cause of cirrhosis, it should not be difficult for you. And this is the classical one. I find that there is a nodularity which is described as a hobnail pattern. If the nodules are going to be more than 3 millimeters, it is called as macronodular. Less than that, it is called as micronodular. Here I am finding some are small nodules, some are large, probably it is a mixed nodular cirrhosis. So what I see is a hobnail pattern grossly. And look at this one. I am not able to see a central vein. I am not able to see the portal triad. This is a parenchyma. There is a lot of fibrosis. F is a fibrosis over here and RN is a regenerating nodule. Since there is no relationship or logic, it is called effacement of architecture. Now coming to our friend, portal hypertension, the main topic for the day. What are the causes? What is the mechanism? What is the normal pressure? Sites of portosystemic anastomosis, manifestations, and ascites. This incidentally is again one of the complications of cirrhosis or any other obstruction. So in this, I am finding that the spleen is enlarged. <coughs> Look at this picture over here. 
and this histology thanks to American Society of Hematology. In this one, I find that the spleen is enlarged. It can be more than one cage. Slate gray in its cut surface. Capsule is stretched. A typical picture of chronic venous congestion. Whereas histologically, this is a trabecular artery over here. I'm seeing the RPCs. And around that, there can be deposits of iron and calcium, which are classically called the Gandhi gamma bodies. So it can see in any form of this. The causes for portal hypertension, extrahepatic, intrahepatic, logic. So extrahepatic means outside the liver, portal vein thrombosis. Intrahepatic, pre-sinusoidal, it can be any of the sarcoidosis, etc. Pre-sinusoidal, most common can be cirrhosis. Suprahepatic can be the butt share syndrome or a right heart failure. Sometimes it can happen in hyperdynamic circulations and arteriovenous fistula. We will come to this butt share syndrome at a later date. This is an important one. Normally, what is the difference between the portal pressure and the systemic blood pressure? Here it is hardly about 5 millimeters of mercury. It can go up to more than 6, but typically it is less than 10 millimeters. When it is more than 10, it is significant of portal hypertension. When it goes to 12, there is going to be a rupture of the varices. That is why the history of hypertension has been given. And 16, there can be mortality more than 20. You find that there will be morbidity due to bleeding. And this is called as HVPG, hepatic venous pressure gradient. I hope you people can apply it. This is an important one. What are the causes for portal hypertension? Very good. There is a hepatic vein over here. And then there is the portal vein. And there are the various sinusoidal spaces. These all can be affected. And cirrhosis is the most common over here. Externally, you find that there can be the hepatic venous obstruction, as in the case of butt share syndrome. can be happening in a case of vasospasm also. So finally, it is reflected upon the spleen wherein there is a splenomegaly. <clears throat> what are the sites of portosystemic anastomosis? A very standard question in medicine as well as in surgery. So these are the sites. You people should be knowing it very well. Eusophagus, rectum and canal, amplicus, bare area, retroperitoneum and the patent ductus. This is very rare. It is not arteriosis, patent ductus, venosus. And I have again mentioned the sites. What are all the various sites and what are the vessels? So it is given over here. I would advise you people to kindly go through it. What are all the systemic components? What are the portal components? But this forms the main threshold of today's discussion because there is a portal systemic anastomosis. And when there is some kind of fibrosis, something else happens. There is a bypass and hence the complications. What are the clinical manifestations of the portal hypertension? There can be a hepatic encephalopathy. Probably we are heading towards it. There can be a lethargy, a drowsiness, slurred speech, disorientation. Disorientation is not because of the alcohol, but because of the ammoniacal substances that get accumulated, leading to a dysfunction. Asterixis or a flapping tremor. Peter hepaticus, a musty odor. And there can be a deep respiration. These are some of the clinical manifestations, I think, your books and your clinical pundits will be better sources of information. And look at this one. Around the amplicus, a fantastic picture that I have been picked up. So there is a caput medice or a palm tree-like sign over here. Look at the distinctions. The amazing picture. At the other end, this fellow is equally proud to have a pot belly. An ascites. My professor used to say, the umbilicus, you find that it is flushed with the surface. The skin is stretched and shiny. 
classical features of it. So the pathogenesis of ascites, again, part of today's class, there can be an increased hepatic lymph formation, retention of sodium and water. There is a theory of overfilling, sodium retention, increased fluid volume, underfilling theory, reduced blood volume. All of them can lead to ascites. You find that there can be the pressure that is caused, the fluid should be at least 500 ml. However, as minimal as 50 to 100 ml can be demonstrated by means of the puddle side. When it is going to be serous, you find that there is less than 3 grams of protein. In a transurate, everything would be decreased. The protein is decreased, the color is decreased, cellularity is decreased. And this again, portal hypertension. You find that there can be splanchnic congestion. Splenomegaly we have already seen. And this is the caput medicine. You find that there can be engorged, subcutaneous pains. You find hypoalbuminemia can be there because of hepatic failure leading to an ascites. Splanchnic congestion also can be over here. There can be the portosystemic shunt leading to esophageal varices and hemorrhage. And the blood flow that is bypassing the liver leads to toxic effects and hepatic endoscopy. This has been taken from illustrated pathology. That is why the page number is here. So, cirrhosis and ascites. This you people should be knowing. Again, a repetition. Liver failure, less albumin, capillary oncotic pressure is reduced and then there is a flow from the capillary leading to accumulation. Or it can be portal hypertension, increased hydrostatic pressure, again ascites. And look at this, the classical mask of today's case. This is a superb one, nobody can beat Priyanka. I would like you people to kindly pay all the credit to this one and go. Kindly support her. She is a great fan of Rather, I am a great fan of this church. There is a hepatic vein obstruction and then I find that after some time, there is a kind of a compression that is over here. It can be either internal or it can be external as in the form of a neoplasm. So hepatocellular carcinoma can be from within renal cell carcinoma can be from without, or any of the space occupying lesions. These are all quite rare, but I have it in mind. Unlikely to be included in the MCQs. And the clog or the thrombus that you should have in mind, the Bacchieri syndrome, etc. Hypercoagulable states, as in the case of a myeloproliferative disorder, polycythemia, oral contraceptive pills, pregnancy. These are all important causes that you should remember. And any abnormality in the clotting mechanism can lead to increased coagulation. Nobody can beat Priyanka. Super person. And as I told you, I am a great fan of hers. What is Peter Hepaticus? A question can come. What is it due to? It is due to the accumulation of the production of dimethyl sulfide. And in today's class, the diagnosis is hepatic encephalopathy. So it is defined as a spectrum of neuropsychiatric abnormalities. We will have to exclude the brain diseases. There can be personality changes, intellectual impairment, depressed consciousness. All these are due to ammoniacal waste products. The features of the liver diseases, remember this one. These are the classical things. Ascites, very cell bleeding. <coughs> Now, what are the features of the liver disease in general? Four things are the cardinal features. Ascites. Two, variceal bleeding. Jaundice. Hepatic encephalopathy. In this particular case scenario, all have been covered. Other things are all a little petty. We need not bother about them. These are the important mnemonics. 
asterisks for the drummer. Brewing, clubbing, pupitrans contracture, palmar erythema, gynecomastia, H for hepatomegaly, I for increased swelling of the parotids. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. So this again is seen over here. So most of the features we had seen either it can be viruses, melina, splenomegaly, cap, poop, medicine. Is it clear? So there can be the corneum. Patient can go in for a coma and you can identify the jaundice over here. Spider reway can be seen. The gynecomastia is over here. And sometimes you find that there can be the spider nevae in the chest. And what will happen is on blanching, it disappears only to reappear. Other features can be the loss of the sexual air, etc. Kindly testicular atrophy. Edema, that is again because of the hypoproteinemia. So these are the various presentations. It is only for a recall. You people are better pundits than me. So, not only is the MCQ, but you find it can be the long case. And coming to this, what are all the various things that you people will have to think about? There is a CBF, which means cerebral blood. CMRE, cerebral metabolic rate permeability. And PS is blood-brain permeability. So this is a normal one, and this is a case of a patient you find that there is a difference in the CT scan that is being made. So this may or may not be given as a case, but probably they have promised that 10% of the questions will be difficult. And if this is going to be there, I think we can still make a diagnosis. This is a pet picture that is there. What is the puddle sign? Maybe it is so very little you cannot spin the knee elbow position and you tap, there is a shifting dullness or a shifting resonance rather that can be demonstrated. See you in what next. <laughs>